Ever since I got bit by that spider, I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. That was when you found out. Welcome to Video Club Reviews. Today we are going to be talking about Spider-Man No Way Home? No Way Home. No I get the home. titles of all three of the movies confused and backwards every single time. So this <laughs> is the uh, the third movie in the Home Trilogy, uh, directed by John Watts, starring Tom Holland, Zendaya, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Jacob Batalon. And yeah, it's going to be a spoiler-free review here to start. We're going to talk about it without giving anything away. So if you're avoiding trailers or avoiding spoilers... Um, we'll make a very clear delineation between now and when we when we start giving spoilers. So don't worry about that for now. If you have uh, if you haven't seen it the movie yet and you haven't been spoiled, avoid spoilers at all costs and go see it before it gets spoiled for you, and then come back. You saw it most uh, recently. You saw it today, right? I just got home from seeing it, and um, it actually it takes me a while to kind of like reflect on movies and gather my thoughts. So I feel like I don't know how much I'm going to have to say about it today, and I feel like there's not a ton I want to. I want to say before uh, spoilers because I don't want to mm -hmm. give anything away. It's tough. Um, yeah. I was a little disappointed, um, and I had soup. I I know it's very upsetting. I had super high hopes. Maybe I should have like tempered my expectations a little bit. Um, but I mean, I overall I did like it, and I feel like once I kind of reflect on it, and I definitely want to see it again. I'll probably have some different opinions on it than I do tonight. But my initial response is I'm I'm a little disappointed and I don't want, even want to go into it until we like go into spoiler territory. So that's that's all I'm going to say. Okay. But uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let us we'll give our spoiler free reviews. Then if you have anything, if you have anything to add, maybe then uh, you can chime in before we go spoiler territory. Yeah. Yeah. Do you I like, like the movie. So like we're talking about the non spoiler territory. I thought it was a fantastic. It's very I'm, entertaining. I'm the Rob today. Yeah, I know the roles have reversed. I'm the Simon Cowell, and but well, let's let's be dual. let's be very honest here. The roles have reversed on a much more critical movie opposed to Eight Bit Christmas. Can I be C <laughs> Can I be CeeLo Green? Yeah, you can be CeeLo Green. Yeah, I uh, yeah. I thought it was a fantastic movie. It's very entertaining. Um, and I kind I tend to like this one more than the previous ones. That's just my take of it. So that's how I feel. I may have a lot of other reasons why I like it more. And then we'll get into those reasons in the spoiler territory. So I'm all for it. We can, uh, Tiffany's uh, down on that side of things. So that's a good thing, though, because you got to have some different perspectives when you do these I, things. I didn't dislike it. I just was a little bit disappointed. That's it. I think if you're not as hyped as me, then you're uh, you're poo pooing the movie. Oh, that's what fair I enough. Think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to say that for once, the hype is real. I was very hyped for this movie. I was very excited for it, more than I have been on any of the previous Spider-Man movies. I didn't really care about the previous two. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I ended up liking them. They were both okay in my books, but this one, I was actually hyped for it, and it lived up to the hype, and then some for me. I think it was the first true Spider-Man movie that we've seen so far with Tom Holland. Every other movie that he's been in, like his own movies, I mean, have felt like a Spider-Man movie in the Avengers world. This felt like an actual Spider-Man movie. Like, Back when you used to see the old Spider-Man movies, like um, the previous the previous trilogies or whatever, they felt like their own thing. Whereas the other two movies, Homecoming and Far From Home, were were you know lots of Iron Man, lots of him dealing with things that are related to the Avengers universe. And like while while there's Avengers stuff in here, um, this was a true Spider-Man movie in, in my eyes. It felt like a Spider-Man movie. Um, so I would say, like I said before, go see this movie if you haven't seen it. Don't get spoiled. It was very good. The acting was on point. Tom Holland played a way more grown-up version of Spider-Man and Peter Parker in this. He wasn't like, oh, you know, Mr. Stark, sir, oh. Like, he was, he felt like he was an older, like, he felt like he was had grown up a little bit. Uh, I thought Zendaya, Zendaya was a show-stealer in her scenes when she was on, on camera. She was yeah. freaking yeah, great. Um, and I loved having her as part of the team and being, like, in the know with Spider-Man and, like, that he's Peter Parker rather than the previous two movies where she didn't know. She was so mm -hmm. good as part of the team. Ned's scenes, again, were just hilarious. He was great. 
it had me feeling all different kinds of emotions. I, like I would almost call it perfect, except for two gripes I have about the movie. So, uh, and these two gripes are basically would prevent me from giving it a perfect score. The first, I thought there was a little bit too much clunky exposition in the very beginning of the movie. And I'll get into it more in the spoiler territory as to why I felt that way. But, and it's also somewhat of, it was somewhat unavoidable. I get that, but I just, they could have done something with that. And then my second gripe is, is kind of what all Marvel movies do is that when something really dark happens or something bad happens or emotional instead of staying in that uncomfortable emotional dark place for like even more than two minutes they jump to another scene and go back to jokes jokes um humor humor I was there's a reason to, for that i get it it's a family it's a family thing but i mean yeah. they gotta like when something really dark happens like there's dark and then there's like really dark and when something bad happens you need this you need to try staying in that zone for just a little bit longer i'm not saying gonna be there for like 20 minutes or anything but just let let the audience stay in that kind of tone but instead of taking them out don't be afraid to keep people there for more than 30 seconds because it just it's it rips me out like i'm feeling a certain way certain emotion and then it rips me away from it like real fast i agree um, i think marvel movies they have so much trouble sometimes walking like that tonal type rope yeah they're like oh we got to cram some more jokes in there but like it's a disney thing keep, now well, but keep yeah. doing it but just just let me stay in that in that emotional place for another minute or so would be great otherwise i give this movie a nine and a half out of ten it was other than those two gripes i have really nothing bad to say about it so if you're looking for a fair and balanced review you're not, not getting it from this guy um i loved it i thought this movie was great i want to go see it again and I, I it grew on me i would say hours after i saw it I, I left the theater liking it but then as i thought about it more and more i started thinking of way more things to like about it so i'm hoping through our conversations here that we convince you to like it even more, Tiffany. I'm sure you will. <laughs> so, so do you guys want to... What do you sorry, want to give it a 10? You gave it a... Yeah, that's exactly it. You gave a 9.5 out of 10? 9.5 out of 10. 9.5 out of 10. I would have given it a 10 without those two grapes. Well, as, as I said before, there are no perfect scores. I have yet to see anything that's perfect, so I'm hypercritical. But I would definitely, for me, uh, with a bit of the nostalgia that's attached to this kind of movie... Everything else, I would put it like at an eight and a half, and that's like getting very close to a nine. Like I'd say, probably, uh, mm, yeah, eight and a half. There's a couple of things that are just a little off, but I mean, fantastic, fantastic movie. I would All give right. it like a a seven or a seven and a half, knowing oh, that okay. I I would be high. willing to. It's still I thought I didn't dislike the movie. I was just it, uh, it just wasn't what I thought, it wasn't what I expected, and I I think that I could even change that number like when I watch it again. You know what we should do actually, we should at some point do a ranked list, all of us individually of all the Marvel movies, and just see where we all how we compare. Ooh, like that'd be a fun a episode. Idea. Just like go through our our ranking and our rationale, and then we like duke it out. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So that being said, anybody that hasn't seen the movie, we're gonna move into spoilers now. So leave get, get out of here yeah, I'm, I'm, i'll put up i'll put up a really loud red blaring siren to mark the spoiler talk starting in three two one all right so spoilers who wants to who wants to go first who wants to spoil something um i, I think i'll go because i'll kind of i'll kind of go a little bit more um I was very, very much excited that, uh, you know, some of the original Sinister's six art is in this. Um, and no Rhino, for f thank fucking Christ. No no, no Paul Giamatti in a, in a mechanical Rhino suit. Crap. Minus, minus an amazing throwaway line that made fun of it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, when it happened, uh, my mind was blown. So you see the trailer, obviously, and you see Doc Ox. Things come up. But then... I was like, oh, it's Doc Ock. And then I was like, I was thinking, I'm like, isn't this where the Green Goblin's uh, grenade goes off? You hear the laugh? And then it, it happened to this, like, the same time frame. And I was just like, or I'm getting confused. But I really liked Doc Ock's character. I mm -hmm. thought it was fantastic. He still had that same... He stayed with it. So this is one thing that I really liked about it. His character was the same as from the Tobey Maguire ones, where he was caring... Yeah, and battling with the voices of that the AI arms in his head, they stayed with that, and it still showed in his face that he was still like he had moments of quietness and then moments of rage. And I was just I was loving that still. I really liked that. Yeah, um, yeah. Doc Ock was uh, the de aging they used on him was so good, pretty damn good. So they did some de aging good. of William Defoe as well. Yeah, no, the de aging in this movie 
was it's very good, way better than the the Irishman or whatever. And everybody like everybody yeah, applauded that. that. Everybody applauded that when it came out. Right, this is like this blows it out of the water. Yeah. So, um, but he, he was that, a great great character. Yeah, with those, I love the interactions with the villains and everything. So I loved um, Hobgoblin. Um, you know, William Defoe was good. I kind of felt. He, he could have been a little like he was really really strong and seemingly I don't remember him being as physically opposing in this compared to the rest of like the Tobey Maguire movies he seemed to be more physically like we're talking like on the same par with Spider-Man or stronger for that matter like spiking through multiple concrete floors yeah was I like, like even even in the movies like and I'm not making comparisons but I sort of am in Avengers there wasn't very many other foes or super or even uh superheroes for that matter that bounced spider-man around like that like he was fighting captain america and captain america is super strong and he never did anything like that thanos was even hitting him a couple times it wasn't to the same caliber of just brutality that he like so green goblin yeah, was very very strong keep in mind the fight with green goblin was in a confined space right fair enough um, i mean i said. thought green goblin I th- so i thought willem dafoe was lights out in this i thought it was one yeah. of his craziest performances his like flipping of a switch from going from like confused crazy person like an mm. actual and you felt bad for him and sad for him to immediately like so unbelievably menacing mm-hmm. was like it that gave me where, shivers man in that movie yeah. or when he the first bit where peter was punching him and he had like that smiling, maniacal smile like a psychopath so creepy yeah mm-hmm. well, and, then he, and, then they fight, quite well. and then they mm-hmm. fight inside and it's a brutal fight because he's fighting like a crazy person yeah and i loved i loved his portrayal of of Green Goblin in this even more than the original movies. I thought was he was good. Yeah, so good. All the so, three main villains, Jamie Foxx, um, uh, Willem Dafoe, and... Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina, thank you, were fucking great in this. All of them I thought were better than the previous movies they were in. Jamie Foxx obviously mm. does not have as strong of a character... Jamie Foxx's character doesn't have as strong of a character arc as the other two, as the other two characters. Hope. But his yeah, portrayal of say. Electro in this movie... Compared to his portrayal of Electro in The Amazing Spider-Man Two, fair enough, yeah. is like night and day. Like everybody well, in this movie that needed a redemption back. needed got their redemption. I felt like everybody that had a redemption that was needed because of something a bad choice by a director or an editor or something. Yeah, got that in this movie, which is like that was so hard to do, so hard to pull There's off. A, I have a gripe with Electro, kind of because everybody. Well, that's not true. I have a kind of gripe with a couple of the villains. So I'll talk about Electro. He was willing. He was sort of like, yeah, I could be a murderer because I got the power, or no, I could go back to having a normal life. And he could take it or leave it. And I felt that there was maybe he should have had a little bit more the definitive choice in either or. So he's kind of wearing the device. He's like, mm. and you can see him. It didn't look like he was warring with his demons or his skeletons that much. It just kind of is like, and then he rips it off. And that, I, that was the only gripe I have about that character. The rest of it, he looked fucking fantastic. Like, his character design, how he looked in the movie, everything he was doing, he was amazing. If you go back um, to The Amazing Spider-Man 2, he played a character who was weak of will. I know. He wasn't know. strong-willed in one way or another. He was easily swayed by, yeah, by power was, and, or I, by being yeah. slighted. And he, cause I felt like he continued that in this movie with that portrayal. I just wish he, was, he would have chosen. I wish he would have. That's just my preference, my choice. Um... The lizard guy, <laughs> the lizard man just kind of was there. Not enough time for like, yeah, I, no. I mean, I'd rather have more time with Alfred Molina and Willem Dafoe anyways. And, um, and Sandman, Sandman, same thing. Both of those villains were, they're fantastic villains in in the comic book series, especially the Sandman. And did anybody guess who weirded out? Like he got, he got, went into the Statue of Liberty and then got fixed and then he just hung out there. Like, and then even Electro struck Statue of Liberty with lightning where he was and then you see a picture he's like were well, you just looking through the grates like I'm still here and it's just like it was kind of I wish those two were more involved like they had more story make it a three hour movie give it a little bit more depth for those two characters because they kind yeah. of felt, it felt, cut it out felt some of the scenes yeah or cut out uh, some of the scenes or it was just like so much dialogue that was not necessary like that bit with Ned's Lola that went on for so long yeah. I didn't need all of kind of, that. I'd rather see some other stuff. It was kind of fun. I loved it. It was time. fun, but it was too long. It was too much. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> it's doing the magic. Mm-hmm. Um, I am magic, Lola. So yeah, back to the villains. I wouldn't be surprised, too, if there actually was more footage that was filmed, probably, with the other villains. Probably. That was that yeah. left on the cutting room floor, because they probably felt like 
you know, they're walking that tightrope of like so many things to, there's so many plates in the air with this movie. And it's like, it probably really easily to like have something oh, yeah. to get filmed incorrectly and it wrecks the tone or it like takes away from something else they've done. So there's probably a good reason for cutting some stuff out. It'd be interesting to see if they release like more footage of things later on. Yeah. Um, I mean, it for the, for the feeling of the villains, uh, I really, I've just like Alfred Molina for me, like stole, stole the show for the villains. I think he did better than William Defoe as the goblin. Willem, I just, Willem Defoe, not Willem, William, Willem. 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 I'll just call him Mr. Defoe. There you go. That's Mr. Um, Defoe to you. Mr. Defoe. You yeah, guys I, I, sorry, go ahead, Tiffany. You weren't bothered at all by um, Jamie Foxx coming back as like super fucking buff and cool instead of like that nerdy Oh, they gave little. a great explanation. They did. Uh, and I thought the it was energy's awesome. different in this world, and that was it. He's yeah. like, <laughs> sure. just like, you know what? Again, it's that was a thing by far like the cringiest thing to me. Everybody was pissed off in, this, uh, in Amazing Spider Man 2 because of how they made his character, right? Like, they basically took things, they're like, you know what, everybody was pissed off about this, let's just undo it. We're just going to retcon all the shit that people were pissed off about. And they did a really good job of explaining most of that retconning. Obviously, his is a throwaway line. But it's kind of funny that they made it a throwaway line, and we're just kind of like, you know what, we know this is a stupid line, but fuck it, we'll just use it, we'll go with it and lean into it, right? Yeah, they definitely didn't shy out from that one. At least they said it and then moved on from it, it wasn't like a five-minute conversation about it, where they tried to be serious, like, they tried to make it like a serious explanation that, that flopped. Mm-hmm, it was like a, mm-hmm. it was like a really quick, stupid line. They probably knew it was dumb, so they had just breezed by it for like five seconds, and they moved on. Yeah, but thank yeah. God because he was so much cooler. I thought so much he, more believable. He was way better in this than in the Amazing Spider-Man too. And that, did you catch they did kind of a throwback to his like comic character with like the little oh yeah, fish yeah, yeah his, his that mask. Was yeah. Cool. yeah, that, that was, was very design. very neat. There's a lot to unpack in this movie. So which which kind of area do you want to go next? Well, we might as well go right into the other main spoiler, which is. We get Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire reprising the roles that, of Spider Man and Spider Man. Well, we all kind of knew it was coming, to be honest, but it was, it was nice. Like, it was fantastic. I mean, it there's a fantastic counter there. There's two. Oh, no, there's not two. You've got at least 13 so far. <laughs> you paused. Yeah, you've got a lot. <laughs> there's not two. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the way they revealed them, too, like, even I don't know about your theaters, but my theater like erupted when they came out of the portals. Like, I don't know if your theaters had, like, people in the crowd getting all, like, amped up, but, like, my theater was They packed. were gasped. And, yeah. oh, everybody, like, people, like, were cheering, like, at the top of their lungs. Uh, it was awesome. And my kids I saw were, a like, collective guys just lean forward. Like, the, all the dudes that were sitting in front of me, they came out, they're like, mm. Like, yep, no. we're on board for that one. No, everybody was like, yeah! Like, it had such a good... But my kids, I was with my kids, and they were like, what's going on? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> I think it would have um, been incredible if they could have kept that. I know there's like no way in this stage, but if they could have kept that like a surprise, oh, yeah. that would have been fucking epic. But like, I they think did about the best they could. It. They did about the best they could mm-hmm. in that we didn't see any actual footage of it beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> Other than like that one shot of uh, Andrew Garfield on the on a soundstage. I am not the werewolf. <laughs> that used in the interview where he was cl- comparing it to the game of werewolf. Where he's like, nope. you're, you're, oh, he's, I see, I see you he's like, I'm not the werewolf. And so there's like a bunch of memes online about just him saying, it's like, I'm not the werewolf. And then that came out nice. and he's like, you are the werewolf. <laughs> um, but he, so they both got redemption so good. Like, so for anybody that hasn't seen the movie, which, why are you here? Uh, Mary <laughs> Jane, Michelle, Joe, Jones Watson gets thrown off, Zendaya gets thrown off a structure. Similar to how Gwen Stacy gets thrown off a structure in The Amazing Spider-Man, Tom Holland dives after her, he gets knocked aside by Green Goblin's glider, and then Q, Andrew Garfield's opportunity to redeem his his character arc, he jumps over the edge, makes the catch, doesn't use his, he doesn't, you know, interestingly he's doesn't use time. the web, he's clearly thought about this for like, however a lot long, of his life. the mistake he's made, right? Doesn't mm-hmm. use the web, catches her, and like that moment where he's like, He's, he's like, are you okay? And then she like sees that he's like getting emotional about it. And she's like, are you well, okay? He's full on tears in his eyes. Yeah, yeah dude, it was awesome. It was awesome. And then the Tobey Maguire part where he catches the glider as it's coming down on Willem Dafoe, whereas Tom Holland yeah. tries to kill Willem Dafoe, and he was killed by a glider that he didn't stop yep. in the in the previous movie. Obviously, and that was a regret he had because Tobey Maguire's character really had great respect for um, Norman Osborn, right? Mm-hmm. And it was his best friend's dad, like. Oh, so good. They both got their total redemption that they needed. Um, that was awesome. I thought that was so good. Them fighting together, like at the very beginning, they went to fight together and they were terrible at it. The other two yep. had never fought with like in a team before. And 
there was one part, it was real quick. They, they both decide to fight as a team and they all web up. And then the two of them shoot their webs. And then Tom Holland fires his web and webs to both of them and then flings them up higher. Mm-hmm. It's such like they go, they flick, they flick out, and then he like gets them and then pops them back up, and then they all land on the t- on the roof of the Statue of Liberty together, all because he's the one who's like fought like in like a team battle before. I like so um, good. when Toby Maguire like they both have the mechanical web shooters, and he's like just shoots it out. And they're like, "Whoa!" And they're like, <laughs> "Just in your body?" <laughs> and they're like, "This in your yeah." They're all like they're like amazed but weirded out. Like, so anything does it come out of anywhere else? And yeah. Toby's just like. No, like, what do you mean? Like, there's this coy, like, they're messing with it. I like the moments when they're all. Well, there's, uh, also like, it? there's like five Peter, minutes yeah, after that. Yeah, no, 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 Peter Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all like. There's like five minutes Peter after Parker one. You're one? the uh, the realization that it comes <laughs> out of his body where they've like moved on, but you keep seeing Andrew Garfield's character in the background. Yeah. He's just staring at Tobey Maguire's wrists. Like, he, they keep, he just can't shake it. It's so funny. He seems to be the most emotional and all over the place. And he's just like, I'm just lame. And they're like, now there's a pep talk. He's like, no, say you're amazing. And there's this whole like building yeah. thing. And that he's like, I love you guys. And he hugs it. He's like the most emotional of the three. Yeah. I mean, but they all, they all jump right back into the versions of their characters that they played. Like how long ago did Tobey Maguire play Spider-Man? Like 20 more than a long time ago, ago. more than 20 years ago. And they jumped right back into the same mannerisms and everything like perfectly. Yeah. I got to say, Andrew Garfield was like a huge standout for me. He was, he was so awesome good. to watch. Yeah. He's wonderful. He's yeah. I don't remember his 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 Spider Man or Peter Parker being as quirky in the show. So you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. No, he, he was. was he very was very similar. Okay. Very similar. I felt bad because he actually played a good Spider Man in those movies. It's just the movie's writing was not that great. Yeah. No. The uh, yeah, like obviously the end when Gwen Stacy dies. Like that was a that was a very very powerful moment. And that like I won't like I teared up and he caught her and I saw him just like. Mm-hmm. Is there any pop left in my drink? Because I'm going to drink here because I need to like try to tap down on my emotions. And like a stepdaughter, Sophia just like looks at me and she's like, "You okay?" I'm like, mm-hmm. "Good." Are you Are you okay? Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> well, speaking of emotional moments, Aunt May. Oh yeah, oh, man, I did not see that one coming. Nope, didn't Holy like that. Holy crap! I mean, I, I was upset about it at the time, but it it I mean it it moved the storyline forward. Like it moved. It's going to change how Tom Holland, if he plays Spider-Man in future movies, he's, he's got like a darkness to him now from that. Like, and yeah, he's kind of over it because of the quick conversation about great power and great responsibility he had with the other Spider-Man. But I mean, that's still going to be something dark within him. And now there's a little bit of, uh, All three symbiote, of them a little bit of symbiote goo floating around his universe. And he's got that darkness mm. in him. Oh, mm. man. We might see a proper, just- a proper dark Spider-Man or dark... Uh, symbiote spider-man who doesn't dance down the street yeah no uh, like, no jazz. actually has rage issues not uh jazz issues yeah, yeah. you stuck around to the end right tiffany oh yeah okay yeah. cool the you, um i had to explain that to ashlyn and sophia they're like so what's going on i'm like okay so he uh everybody gets snapped or whatever have you and then he came in from a different dimension because of the portal thing and he's sitting there and the guys explains the whole thing and she's like, okay. And then that little goose, she's like, what does that mean? I'm like, that means the Venom's now in this world. And she's like, well, what? Rob, did you, did you know that at the end of the Venom movie, there was an um, uh, end credit scene where he, like, kind of blips into Tom Holland's universe and sees him on TV? No. And he, like, licks the TV. Oh, I should have sent it to you. I sent yeah, it to Jim. He's talking about they're laying in bed in, like, a, in a, they're laying in a bed, and Tom Hardy and Venom are t- having their inner dialogue, and he's talking about, like, Ben is talking about all the things he knows about the universe and about the multiple dimensions that would mm-hmm. blow Tom Hardy's brain. And he yep. goes, and he's like, no, he's like, he's like, I couldn't tell you it, 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 it would explode your mind. And he goes, just give me a little bit. And he goes, okay. And he basically alludes that he's got 8 billion years of multidimensional information. Cause Five. all the symbiotes share, I guess like a yep. common consciousness. Like so, a hive mind. Yeah. So he's like, so he's aware of the, he's aware of, other dimensions so he's aware of peter parker and spider-man even though he's never seen that symbiote hasn't seen him yet so okay. he he goes I'll, I'll show you a little bit and then the screen kind of shakes and, and tom hardy's like ah, and then boom they blip and they're like in a different place with like they're in a hotel they're in the room same with like, place but it's like a different time there's or... like palm trees well, so, now or something like that right yeah. so is that why the guy's like and there he goes again like he'd been there in the previously yeah because venom's so- like i didn't do this so they don't know what happened, but it was. So really I didn't know strange. that. Yeah. And then the bartender's like, "Well, there he, go, there he go, and and now he's gone again." And that's what yeah. the bartender says. And I was like, "Oh, I'm missing something." <laughs> yeah, so I, I was expecting Eddie Brock to show up at like the eleventh hour. So I was kind of surprised that he was in the second end credit scene. But I'm glad they put that in there. 
So yeah, he, he got blipped because not because Tom Holland knew about Peter Parker, but because a version of a symbiote knew about mm-hmm, Peter mm-hmm, Parker, right. right? So yeah, it was very uh, interesting. So anybody who knew about him, right? There's the very part. There's the part at the very end when all of the other dimensional characters are trying to break through, and Doctor Strange is trying to stop them. Yeah, and I've I've seen footage. You can actually see Scorpion. You can see Rhino. I saw Scorpion. You can see mm-hmm. all of their outlines that are trying. There's to also get one into guy with a world. staff as well, and then like yeah, Craven, I saw an Easter egg. the Hunter. Oh shit! So they're showing all these guys who basically f- there's versions of them somewhere in a dimension who know about Peter Parker as Spider Man. Well, what's that bit when Doctor when Doctor Strange is first doing the spell and there's like a being that kind of like whips around and looks at him before he like stops it? What's that all about? I didn't notice that. No. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'll investigate on my there. own. Wait. Let's let's talk about Doctor Strange if we if you guys don't mind. Not Why he is now. He's no longer the Sorcerer Supreme in this. He it lost hasn't, it. It hasn't been for years, yeah. Yeah, he lost it. So I'm sure there'll be some something to that because he lost the Mind Stone, or the Time Stone, excuse me. And then... Um, well, because he was gone for so long, they gave it to... They gave it to, be, to what it, the other right, guy. right, right. And he technically well, lost on the well. technicality because he was gone for five years. Yeah. But um, he's way more cavalier. He's way more uh, uh, rebellious. In this, he's like, he's listening to the spell, and then Wong's like, no, 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 that's very dangerous. He's like, well, hasn't he suffered enough? He's like, leave me out of this. And then he leaves, he's like, all right, let's go fuck with the dimensions now. And then let's go downstairs to make this this crazy spell. It's just, he he's just seems like, like he's way he's more free mm-hmm. to make these decisions, whereas in the other movies, the Sorcerer Supreme, he's like, oh, and I gotta keep a stiff upper lip, I gotta keep everything on the level, and now he's like, he's kind of acting like a teenager with power a little bit. Well, everything he did in the first Doctor Strange movie, he wasn't supposed to do. He wasn't supposed to study the stuff he studied. He wasn't supposed to take the mind no, or the, the time stone. He wasn't supposed to fight Dormammu the way he did. So he's kind of always been cavalier and reckless. Um, but it's interesting because if you saw the, the end credit scenes, that cavalierness and that recklessness is going to lead to dark Doctor Strange. So I don't know if you've seen What If, if you've managed to watch I What If yet. I all. No, no. Have you seen the episode with evil Doctor Strange? Tiffany's mind looks like she's Rob. gonna be blown. So <laughs> hey, sorry. So you in the, watch in the, it. It's so good. In the post credit trailer with Wanda, you mm-hmm. see him. That's when you see him and he's all he's wearing all black and he looks like kind of his he looks pale and stuff. That's dark Doctor Strange. And he's got okay. tentacles. He's got tentacles mm-hmm. and like drag demon wings. And there's a part in that after in that post credit trailer was like a big tentacle monster with one eye. Yeah. That character's straight from what if as well. Is it Sumagoroth? Yes. Okay. Yes. In the first episode, fights Peggy Carter, or like Peggy Carter gets sucked into yeah, the yeah, yeah. That that character keeps coming back throughout the What If episodes, and that's the same character in that trailer. Interesting. So, Sumagora is here. So if they're making parts of What Shit. If canon, that means we could see zombie. I mean, zombie zombie Avengers are out there. That's why oh, I wondered fuck. if when Doctor Strange was doing this st- spell earlier and something turned around, I was like, was that the Watcher? And he was like, what the fuck oh, is going on? Oh, that would be crazy. But I don't know. It didn't quite look like the way he looked like in the animated yeah, yeah, series. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm. But yeah, Doctor Strange was good in this. The, the mirror dimension scene was crazy. So good. So well done. I'm a little weird that Spider-Man beat him with math. Geometry, to be specific. <laughs> like That was a little bit like... He's like, this is like this. I know math. You're good at math. I'm exposition all this yeah, way, yeah. so I can beat Doctor Strange. And I was like, that seemed a little forced. Like, well, Doctor I was Strange very is, doing, much like, is doing patterns based on like memory was, and, and studying, right? Whereas yeah, like... Yeah. Spider-Man or Peter Parker is supposed to be a genius. Tom Holland's never really shown the genius side of him very Wasn't much. Wasn't he like a chemist genius Spider-Man in the other ones? In this one, he's a math genius? Well, chemistry and math are... If you took not chemi- necessarily. If, you took, if, you don't, if you're not good at math, you're not getting very far in chemistry, because chemistry 12 in grade 12 yeah, is mold. all math. Yeah, And he's, he's got a level of chemistry beyond chem 12, right? So What about we're, Ned? Magic Ned. I have written down Ned's powers. So <laughs> there has been a bunch of theories about Ned for a while that he's going to become Hobgoblin. Lola, I'm magic. That he's going to become Hobgoblin. Um, there's Ooh, been a bunch of things oh, that have maybe. And there's the one, hinted. There's the line he about said he would never. Yeah. There's the line about my best friend died in my mm-hmm. arms after he tried to kill me. And there he's. And you can go, see Ned go. You know he's thinking. Is that, was that Ned? Yeah. Is that is his name? Yeah, Ned? Ned was like, oh, yeah. He told it to Ned. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, over. It was over uh, Mary Jane as well. Right, yeah. and then it was fueled oh, by you know. You just touched on something. Yeah. yeah. Holy crap! So the ending when that was everybody the start of it forgets about 
uh, yes. Peter Parker. You guys weren't feeling that when you're when you're like I was Ned and her together. I was just like I, Ned and her together. Like my mind was. Like, eh, eh. I was getting Ned and her together vibes for sure, but then it didn't really like. I thought they were going to show them like kiss or like hold hands or something and, and confirm it, but then they didn't. So I was like, oh, maybe it's just in my head. But now that you're saying this and we're talking about Hobgoblin, what a great way to like make Ned turn on him if Ned doesn't really know him. They don't have the same relationship they have now. I think he's going to go with the magic though. I think he's going to go along like your magic now. And then because uh, Doctor Strange is like, did you summon a portal? And he's like, yes, sir. And then Doctor Strange is like, like he was impressed because it's just not he's like he had to train to do it. And they just picked up the thing. was like, mm, portal. Yeah. and then like Doctor Strange is like, did you just do that? And he's like, yeah. So I think he might go that way. Yeah, Maybe but I mean, they can also change. Dark they can Doctor Strange. They can make Hobgoblin a, a magic user, right? Like, I think there's actually I was reading there's versions of Hobgoblin Hobgoblin character that uh, has had magic. Really? Apparently, yeah. I don't know enough about it. I just it's in like a Reddit post, so I don't know how true it is. But maybe we should have brought in our resident expert. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um. That's so for yeah, another time. The ending. I was talk about the ending. Just everybody forgetting about him, and then he goes back to tell. Knew that was coming tell MJ that he loves her and decides against it because she's got the, the band-aid on or whatever. Um, so interesting. Well, her, her exact words go. were, it doesn't hurt anymore. And he like, and sees like, okay, so if she's with me, that can happen again or worse. Obviously, that you know. So well, like, he, hmm. I mean, he had it happen to his basically his mother figure, right? A lot I'm not that. sure, like, the whole happy and, and May thing felt a little awkward. Like, it didn't feel like it added much to the story. Okay, so sort this, of, but sort of like, not. Yeah, and this is my only problem with the movie is I thought the pacing was off, especially in the first half of the movie. There was just like so much talking, so much stuff that I just felt like didn't need to be in there that I would have loved to see cut for like more of the cool stuff. That was the but exposition I, I was talking about in the first half. There was a lot yeah. of exposition, but think about how much they have to like kind of cover for like people that aren't as in the know as like us nerds. Like people that people that are like more casuals that are watching this, that explanation's for them. I not hate for that because which I know. casuals so are going to be have, watching this? I have one other like Marvel about yeah. this. That's why I didn't get a hire. They were at what a university when the three Spider Mans put on lab coats and decided they were going to be scientists and make these crazy devices. That was high, that was high school. That was their high, high school. school. Okay, think, so yeah. not sure what high school the rest of you all went to, but I'm pretty sure that well, my we high school the did. same high school, Rob. This is for the viewers, Tiffany. Come on. The tens and tens <laughs> the viewers of viewers. went to the same high school. Yeah. I'm not um, sure to be what honest, high school you went to. I'm not <laughs> sure. You specifically, Tom. And again, where's my money? Um, how can you, like, they make stuff up out of nothing. I really was a little kind of... In Happy's place, I get it. They had a fabricator. It makes sense. The chemicals, I don't know if a fabricator can make chemicals, but sure, we'll we'll lean in that a bit. But a high school 3D printer. Yeah, but a high school has the chemical composition to fix a split personality, can change a sand monster back into a human, and then has the technical gear to to take all the electricity out of a being made of electrical. I'm totally fine with all the superhero stuff. I am not fine with them making the quick slap stick fixes in a high school. So what but, Rob is saying is he wants more exposition explaining where they get all the materials for their fixes from. Not more action, not more cool stuff, Tiffany. More exposition. <laughs> not not just solely exposition, but spend ten minutes going to somewhere ten getting minutes. something. In well, a high school, though, a, in a high school. They could have made a mission like, oh, we, we need to, we're missing this and this. Go get My it and argument, come back. It will just be t- just high school. In a high they, school? But That's your point, it. yeah, no, your, to your point, they could have made the, the search for the whatever they needed to make the cures an actual, like, cool mission they had to do. Like, they could have each Something. went off, they could have each went off on their own, like, all and three of them could have the separated. Maybe Spider-Man's bond as a team. Well, no, I mean, you could have all three of them go do their own know, thing to get their own piece of equipment that's missing or whatever, yeah? Just a little, a little too... But again, two hour and light on the movie, right? So yeah, Well, yeah, exactly. There was probably more to it, as Tiffany said, there's probably more to some of the supervillain stuff. It just seemed like it was a little too much like we're moving the story on by no explainable reason other than plot like and timing, which felt just I just wish there was a little bit more because they were very smart. And the gadgets that they made to fix Doc Ock was looked, you know, for the most part, fairly complicated. And then it's like, I don't think, a, you know, 12, you know, grade 12 chemistry class has <laughs> that kind of shit. I don't know. The Doc, the Doc Ock fix was done in the fabricator. Yes, exactly. 
Um, and so was the electronic device for Jamie. Or, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> electronic device. Yeah, Jamie Fox. Fox. The shocker. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, so at least right, they, at least they kept it that like the lizard the lizard cure was given by a guy who had made it previously, so he knew what he was doing. And mm-hmm. the cure for Sandman was given was made by the guy who had done it previously, so he knew what he was doing. The split personality yeah. thing, yeah, that was a that was a tricky thing to for for Tom Holland to just figure out, but <laughs> because of chemicals, because yeah. of science, yeah. Um, oh, Charlie Cox. So huh? the Netflix Marvel Cinematic Universe has been confirmed now that it's part of the greater MCU. At the same time as obviously Hawkeye confirmed it as well. If you're paying attention to that at all, but yes. Daredevil is in. Oh, Charlie Cox. Yeah, sorry, Charlie Cox. Yeah. Right. So the scene where the brick comes through the window and he catches it like so yeah. fast, and then but sp- Tom Holland's hand is in the exact same spot. You just see him like look at him like, "What kind of How'd lawyer are you?" He's like, "What yeah, kind exactly. of lawyer are you?" And he's basically like, "He's like, what you just, he's like, what you just did is clearly so." so he know he's now yeah. onto him. He knows that he's got something going on, right? And I love the fact that in, in Hawkeye, we'll do a little crossing as you said, and uh, he's like, "Well, I didn't want, but it seems like the big man's involved." And then she's like, "Big man," and I like I had to like split. Just like that's a kingpin. And the Kingpin was one of, you know, or is Spider-Man's greatest, you know, nemesis and Punisher, well, and Daredevils. So now you've got this bridging, which well, is going to be fantastic. You've got Vincent, Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin is in, in Hawkeye. So, yeah. yeah, perfect. Which then means that could, could... John Barrett, oh, Punisher, oh my gosh. Yes. So one of the most iconic covers is the Punisher it has Spider-Man in the crosshairs. It's just about to take him out. That's like, you can talk to Nathan, that's a very, very sought after key. But now you've got Daredevil, Punisher, and Spider-Man all going to cross, and they all sh- share in the books the same timeline. So, so do you think uh, Tom Holland's going to sign on for more Spider-Man movies? Or is he just going to so. appear in others? movies well he could start appearing in if they bring in daredevil series and if they re re ramp up the punisher series he could appear into it and and him and vincent d'onofrio could all be part of and hawkeye for that matter like all four of them could be involved and kingpin could be the center and now all the sinister six at some points in the comics get hired by kingpin so now you have these all of these characters the axis all together was so. anyone expecting to see any like jessica jones Luke Cage or anything like that? No. No? I don't think they're going to go to the Defenders and bring them in. I don't. And Netflix, like, Iron Fist wasn't that well received. Jessica Jones was good. Um, It was pretty well received. Luke Cage had some mixed... It was received. I I was hoping for a small little appearance. The first season of Luke Cage was (laughs) was quite good. The second season, I think, was not that good. Yeah, the second season was garbage. I didn't watch. It's good. The first season's really good. Have you watched The Daredevil? No. I've only watched Jessica Jones, and I watched a little bit of Luke Cage. Oh, Daredevil and, and Punisher. First season are of Punisher, way and the second better. Season of Punisher. They're so good. Iron yeah. Fist, you could Iron Fist, you could take it or leave it, but like Iron Fist kind of brings Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and their Daredevil in all together at the same time. Yeah. So Anyways. I'm, re- I'm resizing windows here while we're recording. Sorry, anybody. That's watching. okay. I mean, we went on a tangent. The possibilities now that this last Spider-Man movie and the Hawkeye TV series is now actually open the doors for all this and venom for christ's sakes make a note yeah, of I mean, uh, hawkeye venom a little, spoilers venom a little less so i mean because oh, he yeah. you know um tom not tom whatever his name Eddie? is tom hardy tom hardy? tom hardy goes back to a different dimension so he's he's not in the same universe as but uh as the main MCU. yeah yeah right. but but eddie but that version of tom holland but i mean it could be there could be another guy who looks just like him although it's like it's kind of showing that like versions of like the same characters with the same names look different like it's it's man writing for this future movies is gonna be so confusing because like you've got norman osborne exists in spider-man's universe and toby mcguire's but there's no oscorp at all in tom holland's universe like just yeah. so interesting how there's like things that just aren't there and they've now proven that like this is not here and so to bring things back again now you're gonna have to go open up multi divert multi-dimensional travel again it'd Anyways. be interesting if if the Venom glove gets a Spider-Man and he finally rips it off and then it lands on whatever the Eddie Brock version would be in Tom Holland's universe. And maybe that lands on Ned. Maybe it lands on Flash Thompson or whatever. What's his, the, the guy who's always, you know, you got to swing me to school for a month. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's Flash. Flash. Flash Thompson. Yeah, Flashpoint. <laughs> And uh, if you just called MIT, this all could have been avoided. 
Um, <laughs> you, you didn't call. I want more. I honestly want another one. That was a fantastic movie. Again, uh, Jim's going to have his hands full counting all the Fantastics. So, Wait till we do the review for Fantastic Four. It is going to be fantastically fantastic. It's going to be lame. I'm, I mean, it's Feige's doing a version of, <laughs> of Fantastic Four. It'll be, if there's any like hope for redemption for that, uh, those, those characters, mm-hmm. I almost wonder if those characters in and of themselves are just too hard to translate. Like having a character that stretches is, is going to be tough. They're going to have a version of it with um, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel coming out. It'll, it sounds like or it looks like they're actually changing her powers a little bit to be more suitable for film and television. Mm-hmm. So they're Girls. already realizing that stretchiness is really tough to do <laughs> and make it and look squ- like not terrible. And Squirrel Girl, right? My favorite AT and T actress. Have they really? announced that? I haven't seen that. I heard I know that they she talked yeah. about it like a million years ago, but yeah, cool. that she was she was in in the talks to doing Squirrel Girl. They had they had like images and everything. This is the this is the girl from A Wolf Among Us. Yes, uh, oh. Among Us. She was going to be Squirrel Girl. I don't know if it's gone through or not, but I mean the the comic book world is ripe for movies there's just so much material there that hasn't been done yet yeah it's just the like i said the confusion of oh, like it's done. multiple timelines and like um you know an agency that trims trims timelines and multiple dimensions which are not oh, yeah, the same the as Loki multiple timelines too, right Jeez, so you got yeah. timelines and dimensions and time travel and it's just oh my gosh they i wonder so, what the writer so room confusing. is like that when they go to marvel studio like okay and then they, they have 30 odd piles of books and scripts i'm like now, how do we weave this all in together? Just a giant wall of push pins and red uh, yarn going through. But they from- can also do anything and they can explain it any way they want, as proven well, by the Because this movie, the comic so. books has been done so many different variants in different ways. There's yeah. they got yeah. to a point like the new fifty two. So they had all the comics, and then with the, the new fifty two, and it's all new stuff and all different. But it's all canon. So I mean, again, they that's gotta the- they they have a giant sandbox to play in right now. Yeah, so they have a lot of source Marvel they have shows. a lot of source material. Yeah. yeah, yeah, tons. Possibly and they're using it like, like the there was two or three different um, series of books that were the basis for this movie, and mm-hmm. one of those one of those was actually apparently a super controversial one that did not go over well with audiences when it came out as a comic book, but they translated into a movie very well. I can't remember what, it, I, yeah, I don't know enough about the comics to, to talk about it, but interesting. Okay, well, R.I.P. Uh, Aunt May. We'll be doing, yeah. uh, <laughs> we'll be taking a bit of a break for Christmas. So, having myself a safe and merry Christmas, everybody. And thanks for hanging out. Happy holidays. Bye bye. Good night. Bye.